You're we're listening to uh, Vatican Radio on some African broadcast, I think, to Africa. This is Halicrafters Rehabs, and welcome back. I decided to uh, uh, hook this thing up to the antenna just to give it a, uh, a round, and it's working good. Um, what you're over on the left side, uh, you're just to the left of the unit is the digital display that this unit will inherit. It's made by Electronic Specialty Products. It, you can get them on the auction site. Uh, they're a little expensive, but uh, uh, they, this has worked reliably without a single hitch for seven years with the Mark I uh, B. And I expect it to work, work for many, many years on from now. It's just a simple oscillator pickup that goes to a unit that is programmable digital display. Now for the Mark 1B, I'll be making a digital display out of this, as well as I've never done it for this uh, other Halicrafters SX. 99 still needs its digital display, but, uh, but um, uh, that's it's a, an immense help when you're doing alignments uh, for uh, radios as well as when you're tuning. I generally look at the digital display instead of the dial, but you want the dial to be close. This is uh, <coughs> a uh, Lazy Susan. I've used the bare mechanism with just some cardboard thrown on top up to now. <clears throat> the idea I got from uh, Jim Lindeus. Jim is a Canadian. Uh, he takes you along with him on his various escapades and servicing all kinds of different radios. He just did a beautiful Grundig 6 650. Uh, that uh, and uh, uh, he's uh, he just explores it and brings you along with him and he uses a lazy Susan. <laughs> it's a great idea actually, as we will see. <clears throat> I've upgraded mine. I've put a, a wooden uh, I don't know bread board or cheese board or something under it uh, and mounted it in there and put this um, uh, fine or I don't know fine but, but a leather uh, chamois cloth and staple that under it to uh, so I'm tired of chipping my paint jobs and things like that and when uh, doing all the work on these radios especially during the alignment so and then another thing I do is I put a lot of work and effort into these things and I build them to last. And if they don't, I need to know. And I need, I want it to, you know, do what I can to make it last. Any problems that come up. If this thing winds up in somebody else's hands, at least they know who did it. They know uh, when they did it, where they did it. And there's even a way to get hold of me if I'm still living in those days. Uh, and uh, I know a lot about this unit, so... It would be, uh, I also spend a lot of time documenting everything I've done. I've spent more than a day documenting every uh, component that I've changed or refurbished or relocated or whatever inside this unit, including what it took to get bands, band one oscillating, abandoning that one trimmer capacitor in, in place. So all that's documented, and uh, everything, all the inductances and resistances and everything else are also documented. And I put it in a notebook like this one. It's still going. All right, now I'm working on the uh, alignment procedure, which I've not written for a, a SX100 before, but uh, it is very different than typical 
uh, alignment procedure. So uh, it will be, uh, I'll be writing it as I'm doing it. <coughs> so uh, all that's um, uh, ahead of us this weekend and uh, it'll take some time to set everything up and so we'll come back after all that's done. All right, so right now I'm sweeping the 50.5 kilohertz signal first. The oscillator tube of the first oscillator tube is removed. Then you set the signal generator. I'm actually sweeping from 49.5 to 51.5 uh, kilohertz, and it's on band one. And so I'm, uh, man, I've got the pickup for the uh, spectrum analyzer at the same point as my V voltmeter, uh, analog voltmeter. But uh, we're looking at the spectrum generator because it shows you the different peaks going on here. And what else? The the signal is injected at um, the uh, a terminal, terminal 1 of T2. So I've already adjusted first T3, which is the first one on the top of um, side of the uh, second oscillator uh, box. So now we're going to go to T4, which is, I forget which one that is, Right, T4, right, is the other one, and then the the uh, on the top side. I'm doing the top side right now. So I did the top side of T3. Let's not knock the camera. Okay, we'll come in closer so I can get in, and we'll do the bottom side of T3. If you have a copy of the there's no top there's no bottom side of T3 um, I'm forgetting okay T3 and T4 T5 and T6 only have top side adjustments and uh, let's see so only have one adjustment, I should say. So I'm just looking at T4 now. We'll see what happens to. I'm turning the screw in one direction. It's almost as far as it'll go. Alright, we'll go in the other direction. I'm pulling the slug out. Looks like there's some. Oh, it's calibration. Okay. Yeah, it's looking a little more symmetrical. And you can see how it went. Um, as I come out, the, the peak on the left side comes up. So we go back. Trying to build up that middle. There we are. We get some nice symmetry there. Because there's other two, these other two are out also. Let's move this over to the side. Alright. And we'll do T5 and T6. I'm doing T5, and it, it's adjusted on the underside. Oh no, no, I'm, that's the 1650. Leave that alone. Okay. Know what you're doing here, buddy. All right, T5 is over here. So we are inserting that. And, and the, the other peak is growing, so we're going to move it out. to do the 
together T6. One of these is off, off and we're going to find it. Okay, well, we're not going to spend a lot of time on the camera, but the, as you can see, you're, you're working on this for some time. We'll come back when it's done. Okay, let me see if I can describe this. What you see on the curve on the spectrum analyzer is uh, the 1600 kilohertz uh, response on the lower sideband. Now, when I sweep it, and it gets nauseating, let's change this to trace, clear right, video errors. Okay. So it's in lower sideband right now. And the peak on the left is the response at 1600. Now look where system display. I've also adjusted it so it may be wrong again when I do this. But anyway, now we go to upper sideband. And here comes the peak at 1700. And you're done when they're symmetrical. <laughs> and how do you get to that? <clears throat> well, obviously, of course, you want to have as high a response in the center as possible. And you won't, um, it's a little bit off symmetrical because I adjusted it at the last second. I'll fix that later. <clears throat> but um, uh, this that you're in the center of the pass band for the whole thing. If these two in the upper side bands there and lower side bands there. I'm sweeping right now. So the first step I'll take it off sweep now is to find the actual crystal frequency of the lower side band crystal. I, don't know, I guess you could pick one or the other and they'd use the lower. This one turns out to be 1599.9. It's almost right on the button. You do that by just manually sweeping just a little bit here and there and looking for the best response on the uh, uh, spectrum analyzer or if you're using uh, some other meter from the test point B, which is in the schematic. What I do for the spe uh, spectrum analyzer in looking at the 1650 kilohertz uh, IF is I put the high side on pin 1 not on the actual pin but on the insulation of my test lead that comes out of pin 1 of T2 and then my signal generator is going into the stator of the uh, center section of the main tuning gate Okay, so what does what? This is really tricky stuff. Let's see if I can turn this around without knocking everything over. This has actually been in the way continually. All right. And this rip cords, okay. All right. So. There's the pickup for the spectrum analyzer. This is the lead that goes around to the stator of the uh, main tuning gate. This is a lead that's going to my little um, voltmeter, which I don't even use much. All right, so this is T1, this is T2. To get symmetry, this slug is the one that's turned uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. And then the others 
are adjusted for both symmetry and maximum response. And actually what I did was I put it on sweep. I'm sweeping from 1550 to 1650, I mean 1750. And, um, and so I'm literally changing the response from upper side band and lower side band and watching those peaks. This is, is right now on lower side band. Now we're on the upper side band. And I'm adjusting that the T, T2 bottom pin for the best symmetry I can get, which is not going to be perfect. This is where so many people get the alignment of the SX100 incorrect in the IF on the 1600 side because uh, it's really hard to do that when you're looking at the this thing over here. It'll give you peaks and it's saying, you know, adjust it to halfway down and all this, and for the null and all that. That's because they didn't have spectrum analyzers like they do today. So you can't actually look at the curve. Let's get rid of the nausea. <clears throat> so you can't see what's, uh, what's actually going. So, the alignment of the IF is complete. Let me capture some pictures here uh, for my test procedure. And I'm going to have to somehow write this up for spectrum analyzing. Okay, so the next thing to do is to adjust the BFO. Turn the volume down. It's on... Uh, WWV with the BFO on, 5 kilohertz, upper side band, and there's some slippage in here I have to address, but you tune for a zero beat. Okay. And so, if the BFO is adjusted properly going from upper side band to lower side band. Same, you, you won't have a, it'll be the same. Getting this to a zero beats is a trick. So it's on upper and it's on lower. And to adjust it, you take the knob off and you move this around to where it agrees with this index. And then you tighten it down. Then you put this of the knob back on with a zero up. And as I've said before, you're careful not to put it on too tightly so they can rotate without touching the face. There we are. So that is the BFO check. For the notch, you <coughs> set the pitch control to zero, ABC on, and selectivity at three. Tune in an unmodulated character from a station or a signal generator for a zero beat. 
play de energize the BFO. Okay. Rotate the notch depth control to zero. Notch depth control to zero. It's on zero. Tune the frequency for a minimum reading on the S meter. Okay. Should be set at 50. It's not. Okay. And so you loosen the notch and set it at 50. Okay. Actually, I'm going to do it up here. Much easier. You can, you can adjust the notch anywhere. at 50. Now I'll tighten both of the set screws back here. Alright. I feel a notch there. Rotate the control to 51. No, I'm not getting two peaks. It says get two peaks. The meter will indicate two peaks. Readjust the frequency control as necessary to equalize the peaks. Then tune for a minimum reading on the two peaks. Adjust R75 on the side for a minimum reading on the S meter. Refer to figure 11. Okay. So, okay, that's the minimum. Oh, the one peak might be. Let's do this. Let's take this stop off so we can rotate this freely. Because it's a guess where it's supposed to be. Not that one. This one. You just take that clean out. So what I'm doing here let's see there it is. This is a coil. And instead of adjusting this, I'm gonna look for, I'm gonna look for two peaks by just I can't even get let's move this out of the way. Okay. See if I can reach that with this. Let 
we definitely have an operating notch. And the reason why we do is because of what the way we, al we aligned it properly to get an uh, even, you know, symmet symmetry right on the floor. Maybe there's another one. this one. Got a two-handed. But at least it's even. See that notch? All right, that's the minimum. Okay. Okay, we got to put this back in now. Okay, so it's more art than uh, science here. But I got it, uh, this stop is about right there at 50. And you can see, you don't need to, you can't see a thing. Let's get the S meter in the shot. The S meter is not visible. Okay, so we're going to bring it around this way. Okay, so as you rotate the notch, you put your hand in the shadow so people can't see. All right. Let's try. Yeah, put some light on the subject. Try this. Two-handed. Okay. Still doesn't show up good. Alright, you can see the needle now. There's the notch. Now the depth is zero. Five. And there's no notch at all now. And to make to get us the absolute lowest signal reading, we'll go ahead and adjust this pot on the side. Okay, so fifty. 51, but 50 is where the notch is, there's your notch depth, notch off. So it's working. Probably for the first time on um, even on this set and on um, better than it ever worked on the other set that I had. Which all goes back to symmetry between upper side band and lower side band. I'm going to try to notch here. Off. It'll be fun when we're doing DXing on the medium wave band.
with the notch. That's what this rate receiver can do that no modern receiver I know of has the ability to do. Okay, on the crystal calibrator, you simply set it on a frequency and then it uh, should give you a zero beat at the point. I'm going to connect up the uh, um, digital frequency thing before that, and I need to align bands three and four. To align bands, any band, but I only have band, I had to do one and two before I even put this oscillator fix in. But we're looking at this, uh, the digital frequency readout, and we simply go, well, I can't. There's just not enough space here, unless I turn the camera sideways. It's probably too close anyway. But it's as simple as throw away instructions, right? This is the uh, slug for band 3. That's done for the lower frequency. The, I've tuned it to 12 on the indicator, but you see it's 11, uh, 325, so we're just going to move this up to 12. Now this is a replacement trimmer capacitor that somebody put in before I got to this. Look how well it responds. So that's it. There we are. We're at 12. We'll go ahead and adjust this too. That's the RF's uh, high end trimmer. Now that I need to see the S meter for. And we need, actually need a signal, so let's just put it on a signal. Oh, it's on the wall. Step one, set band spread to zero, or maximum in this case. All right, bring it all back. <laughs> yes, how many times have I done that? I can't count. Wrong way. We set, set it up with a band spread at maximum. Then we do these changes. Step one in the procedure. Remember I threw it away? Okay. So let's find a station. Okay. For maximum response. Well, it's not precise. You can tell. Fact. The best way to tell is to go to noise. Here we are at noise. I'm just using the antenna compensator to get any more noise. Maybe I should have less. Okay. So then we go down to a low end. I usually do about 5.2 because the reality is there's always a little stretch at the very end. So you'll never get it if you do that, what they say in the book. And we bring this down to 5.2. Don't even need a signal generator. Ain't that cool? Get a signal. There's one down here. But he's not here. Yet. We'll listen to Canada. And C. 
seated. There you are. And then we go up again to 11, 12, and we got to make that adjustment. Very close. Twelve and approximately is really good on analog because the reality is you're using the digital. We're listening to Radio France International from Isadun. Okay. And then we'll go back to 5.2 again and probably not have to adjust anything. 5.201. Okay. It's so close now that <laughs> putting my hand in there makes a difference. Okay. Okay. Go five. Went too far. That's going to be as good as we can. Let's go ahead and adjust this one more time. Is there an antenna on there too? Yes, there it is. Well, a few out there. Yes, sir. This radio is going to be hot. Really good. I might want to do a signal generator for that. Let's do. So, just to do the one 
high-end frequency we're going to put a we're going to electrocute ourselves don't do that all right we're going to put a very small signal and peak that one capacitor one two okay sweep off we're done with that one two mega cycles okay and this is without the thing turned on it's that much signal this is where you rock it Operating very nicely. All right, let's go to band four. Go to thirty two and this is the replacement trimmer is what we adjust and I, to get the frequency and it's going to be real critical wow and then while we're there we'll adjust the, the RF to a low frequency. Just looking at the digital display here. Fourteen. Thirteen is good. Pretty close. The interesting thing is it's all the way out at 14 it's almost like we should use the other one to we really can't do anything with this frequency adjust because it's it's when you put the cover on you're gonna hit <laughs> Let's see if we can get this. Well, we're going to do this off the camera. This will be slow. Okay, on band four, I did get it reasonably close. That's 16. That's 15. It's on 15 at this point, so if it's within 50, use a digital display. Leaves one more. We'll, when we get the cover on, we'll have to go back and revisit that because it'll be shifting, and I hope it's in my favor. This is very close right here. Leaving one more thing I want to do. Right now I'm running a drift test. I'm in the middle of it and I just start out at 10 kilohertz at, uh, with a cold receiver 
and check uh, what the reading is every five minutes. And uh, right now we've drifted 2.5 kilohertz in almost uh, 25 minutes. And so we'll look at the graph when all that's done. The one thing about drift measurements is they take a lot of time. This is the 90 minute change and we're starting out with uh, looking on the right hand side curve about a half or 500 hertz per five minute period which is declining slowly over 90 minutes. So rather than reaching a uh, early equilibrium there's a small uh, change that goes on for some considerable time but there is an inflection point and it slowly uh, evens out as the temperature inside the set stabilizes. So the next thing we'll, I'll do is do the uh, audio output measurements. I have to set all that up. So here's the audio response curve from 100 Hertz to 6000 Hertz. What I do is I t uh, set the signal generator to 1000 kilohertz and maximum uh, 5 kilohertz uh, selectivity and run up every 100 hertz uh, an audio signal uh, simple uh, the, the uh, amplitude um, sine wave signal with a rate that goes from 100 to 6000 hertz and record the values in de decibel using my little rig here and my DB meter here and just plug it through in directly into the uh, headphones jack at maximum volume and uh, then you get a curve that looks like this. There is a way in Excel with a lot of struggle and fighting to make that a log log graph but maybe later. So, gonna have lunch, and then we're gonna do the minimum uh, detectable signal. Okay, this is the last test I'm going to do uh, on this video, which is an audio signal to noise ratio test. Inject a thousand hertz, kilohertz RF signal at minus seven dBm, which I've done modulated at 30% and a thousand hertz tone and then the volume is set to maximum okay and then what is the I can't read it because it's the wrong flashlight what is the reading on the meter over here and it's on uh, plus 30, 30 dB plus the 4. So it's reading 34 dB. And so with it off, Turning the signal off and turning the whole thing off because it, it generates something. And I'm reading minus 20 <laughs> of nothing. Maybe you're supposed to have this on. So, yeah, there's signal even when that's off. So, it's, it's literally not reading anything. Make sure we're on normal. We're all, it's 
system is on, sensitivity is maximum. Oh, yeah, down to here. It's, it's like n nothing at all, minus 20. So, 54. The signal to noise ratio is 54 dBm. Minus 20 plus 34 is is the audio signal to noise ratio, and that's it. And that's enough for this video. This is Halicrafters Rehabs, and thank you for watching. And we just have the. Uh, Minimum detectable sensitivity measurements, basically. Plus, we'll check. Uh, I don't know if it's useful with a, this receiver. Um, image rejection should be really, really good. And then we're going to take a look at the S meter and how close it is to the uh, receiver. Um, is, uh, how close it is to what the input signal is. Thank you much for watching.